Hello, welcome back to my studio. I'm Malcolm Dewey and today we're going to be playing around in the studio doing something a little different, a bit of fun. And one of the great things to do when you have some time but you want to do something creative, get out some multimedia paper and play around with the different mediums you may have on hand. I'm going to be using uh, some Fabriano multimedia paper. This pad comes in 250 gram paper. It's acid free, 40 pages in a pad like this. And as I said, really good value for money. So I'm going to be trying out different media. It says it's multimedia, so I thought it'd be fun just to play around with the different uh, mediums that I have on hand. We're going to be using some ink, we're going to be playing around with some gouache, some acrylics, some watercolour and uh, some pastels as well. So what I thought I would take a reference and divide the page up into sections and do the each section in a different medium and uh, just see what the result will be. Here's the reference that I'm going to be using. Starting off with just lightly sketching out the entire scene and then dividing it up into four sections. I'm going to start off with uh, the ink using Pigma Micron pens. Really great pens to work with ink. Water resistant and uh, they're great also for pen and wash. So as you can see I'm going to just speed through these various sections so you can get a good idea of the methods I'm using and then uh, try out whichever ones catch your interest and you can move to those sections of the video as well. So the first part I'm just overlapping a little into the second part um, where it makes sense. It'll all um, come together in the end but to use various techniques when you're doing the ink section um, obviously it's monochrome so you've got to just think in light and dark values and I use various techniques like cross hatching to create darks and obviously expose the white paper for the lights and in the very dark sections I'll be using the um, brush tip as well which is a really super little tip for the ink pens and you can use that for getting more painterly effects as well. I'm just going to draw in the figure in the next section before moving into using uh, pencil crayons.
Right, I'm using water soluble pencil crayons. I have no particular brand I can suggest. There are many really good pencil crayon manufacturers that produce water soluble pencil. So what I like to do is just get in the main flat colors. Um, here and there I'll do some transitioning, perhaps light and dark before going into adding some water and just pulling it all together. And the effect is similar to watercolor. It's not quite the same, of course, where you have watercolor and it's very fluid nature as it falls across the paper and dries in different ways. So this is definitely a lot more control and perhaps more suitable for journaling. Certainly very much more portable. A lot of these colors I'm just adding on lightly where the, there's fairly light uh, sections. And as you see, the, when the water gets in, involved, um, you won't get such a, a dark color. So just a little bit of experimentation with your materials and you'll be able to uh, prepare the uh, process a little more carefully and, and see exactly where you're going. Now uh, these um, really handy little water reservoir pencils, unscrew them, put a bit of water in and they don't leak as long as you don't press them. Um, they will retain the water and it's simply a very easy way to bring water into your journaling. You can see it just dissolves that water soluble pencil really nicely and you get this really lovely um, soft color. And now the next section I'm going to be using gouache and as you can see Winsor & Newton's designer gouache is really good quality gouache and I love using it. As What I do is put the gouache into, I actually use an ice cube tray that can be sealed and then I mix the colors on the mixing tray. And that process um, helps you to get a good mix of color. That's the nice thing about gouache, although water soluble, um, the colors mix really well together. 
and you can reactivate the gouache by adding water so when it dries it's not like acrylics and it's basically over um, with gouache you can rework the colors and you get a really nice sort of velvety color it dries to a matte finish so the critical part with gouache is apply many layers and uh, um, constantly working the layers like this they dry very quickly so mix up color on the mixing tray it certainly does get you thinking about your color mixing and uh, I think uh, one of the mediums that really helps you become better at mixing color so going to some bright strong high key color here with these yellows but you'll notice I'll go over it again and build up the layers making good use of that complementary relationship between the yellows and the purples and violet bit of orange and blue as well also making a good complementary relationship The process with painting with gouache is very similar to other opaque mediums. I like to work from dark to light, building up layers, getting to the lightest and most uh, powerful brights and highlights at the end. And the quick drying nature of gouache also helps to accomplish this as well. And now on to the acrylics. This section of the painting is fairly straightforward parts of the scene, so not too much to worry about in respect of any details of course, so just getting the elements of light and uh, some of the foliage and grass. So um, yeah, we'll pretty much bring this section in before moving on to the final touch of multimedia and that will be with the pastels.
Right in this final stage, I've gone back with pastels into the watercolor section. And I often like to add soft pastels in to uh, watercolor, especially in journaling. The pastels, if, if the paper has some tooth left to it, which in this case the Fabriano paper does have something to attach the uh, pastel so it does work and I find the pastels just adds that bit of zing of bright color perhaps that um, element of value contrast that I haven't quite got with the watercolor I can bring into the pastel and nice um, elements of color like the blue in the shadows and uh, things like that which just help me to get that, um, I think that strength of color that I do miss, especially in, in this uh, exercise where it's right next to the vibrant gouache as well. So, And I like the fact that the paper does take the pastels like this. So it's definitely something you should incorporate in your journaling. And I'm using a mixed bunch of pastels, some very reasonably priced pastels as well. And a few expensive ones there as well, I suppose. But um, you can get some reasonably priced pastels and they can really give a lovely punch to your journal work as well. So that's about it for our multimedia paper and I think it's really come off very nicely and shown the range of work that you can do with paper like this and it's a lot of fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little demonstration, this little play around with multimedia and it's inspired you to try out a few ideas yourself. No pressure, just go for it, just doodle around, color in, what have you. It's a great way to de-stress, learn your skills as well and just to play with your materials because really that is how we learn. Just trying stuff out and uh, seeing how it works and the ideas start coming you get a bit more inspiration and before you know it you may have a really good idea for a fantastic piece of work well if you found this useful or enjoyable please uh, subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified of more uploads of new videos Share this if you can as well and give it a like. I'd really appreciate that. Until next time, cheers for now.